Hi, today's date is the 24th of July 2017. And yesterday I noticed that I was re wearing the whole time my reading glasses, I didn't even realise. But today I'm actually purposely wearing my reading glasses for obvious reasons. I've got to do some reading and everything's for the bits. My, my, one of my favourite books in chess is going to be shown here with and it is none other than owned by D. Wegener. I paid $4.75 for it. How to cheat at chess. Now can I actually cheat in chess? Well I suppose I could. Um, what I like particularly is this is not my book of course it's written by William R. Hartston from England who was international master of chess um, probably still is and this is everything you always wanted to know about chess but were afraid to ask how to cheat at chess now what i like particularly is among other things because it's hugely famously um, enjoyable and funny to read and i really love it is chapter four friendly games chapter four friendly games is exactly that there is no such thing as a friendly game of chess that's chapter four, okay? Then we've got chapter five, friendly games. Note the inverted commas around the word friendly. There's a few things you should bring away with you if you're going to a friend's place or an opponent's place for a game of chess. They are the following. A copy of the laws of chess, latest edition. Well, that'd be hard to get because the laws keep changing. Two, one white queen, queen, one black queen. Number three, one army surplus gas mask. Four, hip flask filled with equal measures of sake and vodka. Five, two earplugs. Six, one hospital's doctor's bleep. Seven, pocket of orange peel. And eight, one double base optional. That's optional, that one, number eight. So here we go with our illustrative game straight out of this book, which I again say, this is William Hartston's book. It's not one I've written. I would have liked to, to have written this book, but I haven't. So anyway, here we go with today's game. We hope the reader will himself make full use of these notes when annotating games himself. In view of the forthcoming world shortage of original notes, be, he should find all he needs in the short game of chess. So where I don't know actually what the result is, but have a look. This is possibly quite entertaining. Pawn to Queen 4. Now I will read the subtitles for each move. Tar Takeover Tar used to write enthusiastically some 40 or 50 years ago, and that was back then, this is the 1970s, that this kind of stuff was the opening of the future, D4 or Pawn to Queen 4. Pawn to King 4 or E5. Black prefers straightforward development and is quick to take advantage of the opportunity, see I'm still reading from a book, to establish himself in the centre. Queen d2, threatening to attack a later stage with moves such as queen to rook 6 or queen h6. If convenient, of course. And that's the sort of move you can play in one minute chess or bullet chess. A uh, very, very good move to startle your opponent or stifle them if they've uh, only got two seconds left on the board because also then they won't even see that move because they will never have considered queen h6 if they've got two seconds left on their clock. Pawn to e4, or pawn to king 5. When black can play this move safely, he invariably solves all of his opening problems. Now we have a new move. This is a thematic move. Queen f4 attacking the e-pawn. I think. I can claim to have played this move as long ago as 1938 against the late E.M. Jackson at Hastings. 
F5. I actually remembered that bit because I used to, I used to, or I do still say that sort of comment in my games. Um, I played this move against the late Ian Jackson at Hastings. So F5. This is a really good move. But they also, um, William Hartston also gives this move. Um, pawn to Queen Knight 3. Or interesting here is B5. But what would be wrong with this move is Queen takes pawn and Queen takes rook next move, regardless of what black does. So F5, interesting here is pawn to Queen Knight 4, B5. Now white plays H3. Um, other lines cause the defence little difficulty. Okay, so we have now a, a surprise move, a very good move in one minute bullet chess is bishop b4 check. Okay, after this move white is left with great difficulties. Knight d2, or knight to queen 2. Note how naturally white's moves flow from the character or characteristics of the position at hand. d6. The purpose of black's opening dis dispositions is now clear. Queen h2. Those who are familiar with the teachings of Nimzovich will recognise his influence on the central play in this game. Bishop e6. This position has undoubtedly been foreseen by both players at the start of the game. Now comes a really, really interesting move. A4. That's good. A4. Thwarted in his efforts to attack on the king side, white hopes to establish a strong bind on black's queen side. Good idea. Queen to h4. This is no doubtly of great favour for Black's position. So Queen h4. Black, like Morphy and Alkine before him, believes that God gave him pieces for the purpose of attacking the enemy. A creed which could profitably be more fervently embraced by many other modern players. Okay, whatever all that meant, I don't know. Um, just joking. Rook to a3. Okay, now this is fantastic. I can claim to have played this move as long ago as 1938 against the late Ian Jackson at Hastings. So that's again where we have a comment from the floor in regards to that game back then at 1938 against Ian Jackson. Now we have Black's move c5 or pawn to queen's bishop 4. This is not only threatening or threatens um, b5, which I'm sure everyone could see, this threatens b5, but also provides a safe square for the queen at queen's bishop 2. Back there again. It's whistling to me, the computer. Okay, that's all right. So, <clears throat> pawn to bishop four, and white now plays rook g3. Now, I don't know what white's doing. Faced with a threat by black to establish control of the black central squares, white tries to contest the vital point. F4, the, there is nothing better to say than this move. This move's highly obvious. F3 played um, last night in the game exactly the same position. F3. Bishop B6. Um, Bishop B3. And uh, who would have thought that we'd get to this position again? Okay. White presumed. Uh, hold on. I, I must pawn to F3. And it says there is nothing better. Uh, that's for f4. So after f3, did you find this beautiful move? 
Don't be ashamed or discouraged if you did not. For many a strong player would have missed it. Okay. Now let's have a look at this position right at hand now. Black's just about going to make their 10th move. Who's winning? Well, I think that if we put this on the computer engine on Fritz 11, it would say that black has a strong position um, comparative to white. Why? Because white's poorly developed, obviously. Two, this will suffice and it wins major material, or this would suffice because it wins major material or similar. So if you didn't find this beautiful move F3, then you're excused from class. So Bishop B3. White probably assumed that this move was not possible in the analysis earlier on before the game started. And most opponents would probably agree with him. D5. Or pawn to queen 5. See? I better not show you the position. Uh, pawn to queen 5. Appreciably weakening black's attacking chances against the black squares. I played pawn to king 3 against Jackson here. Or e3. Bishop to a5. An extremely well judged move which unobtrusively prepares the counter attack. I, I can't say that I understand exactly what's going on here, but I think white's going to lose. C4. Hmm, that's interesting. C4. I will not spoil your pleasure by saying more at this stage. And now what's Black's next move that is the coup de grace. Um, very, very pleasant position this. It's a famous position, as we've already mentioned. White is now met with E3. And now, it's stalemate, because what can white do? So have you ever seen a position with the whole of white's pieces and black's pieces on the board and it being a draw? So that's my illustrative game for today, and it is taken from this book, How to Cheat at Chess. If anyone that I know wants to have a look at this book, they may. And there's also a, a sequel to it that is S dit 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 porn. And so these there's some really, really good, fantastic um, chapters in this book. How to offer draw. How do you offer draw in chess? Um, physiognomic chess. That's one of my favourites. Commercial break. I'm not completely sure what that one's about. International episodes about cheating and the going to um, the rest room to have your pocket chess set in there. Club chess, etc. And of course, like I said, friendly games of chess. Okay, so that is the end of my session. I can now take my reading glasses off and and look proper, 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 properly at the screen. And that's all for me on this rendition of my chess session for today. And thanks for viewing. I really appreciate it. Over and out from the Muppet land of David Wiegner in Christchurch, New Zealand. The deep, 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 deep south.